Okay, in this video I want to do an example of finding work in relation to one of these cable and rope problems. And I think again you see work problems usually either with Hooke's Law and springs or these cable rope problems or usually these draining the tank problems. So uh, this will be a pretty basic cable rope problem. And I think it's one of these things that ends up not being as bad as you think it's going to be. Um, or at least it wasn't as bad as uh, what I thought it would be. Um, okay, so again, here's just the definitions of work. Again, uh, if force is constant, work is force times displacement. But again, what we're trying to do is just turn it into an integral. But maybe it helps to think about it in terms of this uh, Riemann uh, sum as well. So here's going to be my problem. We've got a heavy rope. Um, it's 60 feet long. It weighs 2 pounds per foot. And it hangs over the edge of a building 120 feet high. So. Um, so the building's 120 feet. My sad looking little rope here that's hanging off, um, that rope we said is 60 feet long. And it says the rope weighs 2 pounds per foot and it hangs over the edge of the building. Okay, we just said that. Uh, two things. Part A, how much work is requ required to pull the rope all the way to the top? And in part B, how much work is required to pull up half of the rope? Okay. And I think B is kind of an interesting question. We'll talk about that. The fact that the building is 120 feet is not completely irrelevant in this problem. What's, uh, what's important about the fact of the building is that it's taller than the rope is long. Um, because, you know, if the building was, for example, 40 feet high, well, obviously some of the rope would all be coiled up on the bottom and we would have to kind of do something a little different. But definitely the building is pretty tall. It's longer than the rope. Um, so this building could have been 100 feet. It could have been 80 feet. It could have been 61 feet. Um, that's really the only part where it comes into it. And, you know, maybe you argue about the effects of gravity and this and that. Um, but I think uh, that would be pretty uh, negligible here close to Earth. So, so irrelevant, I argue. Okay, so what I'm going to do is we've got the rope, um, <clears throat> you know, so here's my little rope, and I'm going to just draw it a little bigger. So there's my rope that is 60 feet long, okay? What we do is we basically just chop it up into end pieces, just like if you're going to find the area underneath a, a, a curve, you first chop it up into end pieces and use a bunch of rectangles. We're going to do the same idea. We're going to chop the rope into in pieces, and we're basically basically going to figure out. You know, we're going to focus in on one little segment. So I'm going to look at one little segment of this rope. Okay, and I'm going to assume that this rope has width delta x. Okay, and what I want to do is I, I basically just want to find. I want to think about what's the work required to lift this piece to the top. Okay, and one thing to kind of, the way I think about it is almost like this thing is just suspended in air. This little piece of rope is just hanging in air. Forget about the stuff above it, forget about the stuff below it. How much work would it take to just move that piece up to the top? Or maybe it's connected by a really thin little string of negligible weight. Um, so, just again, how much work does it take to take that little slice to the top? Okay, well, I think uh, in this case it's it's uh, the work required to move that little slice. Well, let's think about the force on this little slice of rope. Okay. Well, they tell us that it's two pounds per foot. Well, okay. If delta x, if we took a, a section of rope that was say one foot wide, I guess the force on it would be two pounds. If we took a, a slice that was I don't know three feet wide the force on that we would say would be six pounds. So how are we getting that? We're just multiplying the, the force, two pounds per foot, times the width of the slice that we take. But here since our slice is delta x, the force on it will simply be two um, times delta x. And again that's in pounds. I'm kind of bad about units. So again, the force is just how much it weighs sort of per unit foot, per one foot, and you just multiply that by the, the, the size of the piece that you're taking. 
Okay, so I'm going to introduce a variable here. Um, we'll call it x. And x is just going to represent the distance from the top of the building um, down to whatever little slice I'm looking at. So I'm going to just suppose I'm x units down um, to get to my, my slice of width delta x. The displacement that this little slice of rope would have to go through to get to the top well, if it's x units down, it would have to travel a distance of x units to get to the top. So that would be the displacement, um, and I think I used a little lowercase d. So let me use a, a lowercase d there. This would be the force on the slice, and this would be the displacement that this little slice has to go through. So it says the work in this case, um, maybe let's let me get another piece of paper here. It says then the work in this case, if we use our limit definition, it says it would be the limit as n goes to infinity of the summation i equals 1 to n, and it would be our, so it would be on the force of each piece um, times the displacement that it has to go through. So we would have basically 2 delta x times x. Um, so we'll basically have just 2x, and our delta x is going to turn it, well, I guess I need to leave it at delta x. I'm getting ahead of myself. This would be the force on the displacement. We're just kind of reordering things here a little bit. I should have a little x of i here, technically. Um, so, But again, that turns into our integral. And we're basically left with just 2x dx. That's what we're integrating over. So now we have to think about our limits of integration as well in this problem. But since we want to pull up the entire rope, what what values would x vary between? Well, the top of the rope, if we're measuring x from the top, that would be a distance of 0 units away from the roof, from the top of the building. And then we would have to go all the way down to get to the bottom of the rope. We would have to travel 60 feet down, because the rope was 60 feet long. So our limits of integration would simply be 0 to 60. So the length of the rope gets taken into consideration in the limits of integration. And hey, uh, now we're pretty much there. All we have to do is integrate this. So if we integrate uh, 2x, we'll simply get x squared from 0 to 60. 60 squared would be 3,600. And since we used feet and pounds, our good old units here in uh, America, we use uh, foot pounds. If it, Again, it was in uh, newtons and meters, you would use joules uh, would be the equivalent equivalent uh, units, or not equivalent, but the units you would use in that case. Okay, so not too bad. Again, all you do is you think about uh, a, a slice of width delta x, you have to figure out the force on that little part, you have to think about the displacement that it goes through, again, usually the length of the rope or the cable or whatever, that's going to come into play with your limits of integration, and usually you end up having, uh, at least in the simple ones, a pretty simple integral to calculate. So. Um, so I think I'm going to stop this one here. If you want to see part B as well, take a look at that. Before you actually compute that one, we said to lift the whole, ro the whole, the whole rope, it's 3,600 foot-pounds. If you only lift um, half the rope, would it take 1,800 foot-pounds? Do you think it would take half, of, half as much work? And, you know, before you actually do the arithmetic, imagine you and your friend are sitting there, you know, you all have to take turns pulling up the rope. Would you want to pull it up? at the beginning or would you want to pull would you want to pull up the first half or intuitively would you want to pull up the last half or again really does it not even matter so I'll let you think about that I think kind of an interesting question and we'll see what happens in the second part